wedding gifts and, you know, and we are so unique in our product lines, right? We can, we have so many different things to give. We have something, literally something for everyone. And, um, and Deb's right, you know, from babies to, to pets to, uh, you know, yeah. you name it, Man, look at all Everything. the babies. Too. Yep. I mean, you can, Deb, Deb was talking about, well, I could walk them through my house and they could see every single room and see, you know, you could literally have a little product, uh, demo in every single room, you know, without them even knowing it. So, um, I, I love that idea. And it's something that, I mean, look, this is, this is about building your business again in the nook and cranny time, you know? So when you're out and about and just doing your life, these are things that you can, ha you can be doing without even thinking about it. Um, I love Sandy Ellsberg talks about, you know, being the bad lady. She is the queen of sampling. And, um, so, and that's what Deb is talking about. Show it, use it, give it. So simple. Deb, thank you so much. <laughs> Isn't she awesome? I love her. So um, this is fantastic. Our next speaker, Lisa Nelson, um, her topic is five tips to turn your hobby into a business. And Lisa is originally from Canada. She lives in Utah. She has four children. She came to Longevity via Heritage Makers. Now, I want to point out, you guys, if, if you've come into Longevity through another company and you, and you think, oh, you know, like, I'm, the, I'm unique, you know, we were acquired by Longevity and I don't quite feel like I belong. I just want to point out that almost every speaker here, except for one, that the godmother of us all, Cheryl Morley, <laughs> um, everybody came in via another product line, another company. So you're not alone. So Lisa came to us uh, via Heritage Makers, where her cousin, Candy May, is the founder of the company. She, uh, Lisa left a career as a teacher to join Heritage Makers. And she became successful by sheer tenacity and hard work. I asked Candy May about what two words describe Lisa the most, and she said consistency and knowledge. Um, Lisa's always been consistent, even with when life gets downright challenging and hard, and she absolutely knows her stuff. She also loves to have fun, and she knows that when you're running a volunteer army, like we all are, that you've got to have fun. Like, why do it if you're not having fun? So one last little tidbit is she met her husband, Chad, while she was doing a home demonstration for Heritage Makers. So I, I'm loving introducing all these women to you because I want to like just uncover a little bit more about them that you maybe didn't know about them. So Lisa, hello. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for that intro. That actually takes away the whole first part of my presentation. So that's just perfect. <laughs> Tell us again. Tell us again. <laughs> oh, no, that you, I think you covered it. So, but I do have some slides um, and I wanted to show them if I can. So if I can get this. Yes, screen you share. can screen share. And I'm just trying to figure out how to get it to go full screen. So just let me take the screen and then I'll figure it out from there. So. I think I'm a techie, but when I'm put on the spot, all my techie skills just, uh, they disappear, so. I understand, I'm the same way, and I'm not techie. But <laughs> I start to get a little panicky. Yeah, I know, it's like, uh, okay, here we go. So yeah, I'm excited to share five tips to turn your hobby into a business today. So here's my family. This is a couple of years old. I'm so bad at taking family pictures, which I, I, baffles me since my roots with heritage makers kind of taught me all that. But you know, people say that business can be a life-changing business. And with how I met my husband through this business, I definitely absolutely is a life-changing business. Um, and it's just been amazing for me. You know, I was raised in a, on a farm in Canada and my dad worked for himself. He was an entrepreneur. And so, you know, one of my favorite memories of him 
was just taking time off work, whether he was in his work overalls or whatever, to support us in our athletics. And he worked very hard. He volunteered. He was so active in everything he did, but we knew we were number one. And he had that flexibility because he did work for himself. So I taught school for eight years. And then I took a leave of absence when we started Heritage Makers because I just always had a dream to work for myself. Um, a business can be a hobby, but a hobby isn't always a business. You know, one of the best parts about a business is finding something that you love. There can be fun, there can be enjoyment, there can be, um, you can be so fulfilled by a hobby that you have that is also a business. But in order for a business to be a business, I really believe there has to be that financial element today. So today I get to talk about some tips that help you turn your business into a business, meaning you're also making money from that. So first of all, know your goals. Um, after about a year, when we started Heritage Makers, we kind of, as, as um, employees, we were given a choice. Did we want to continue to be employees or did we want to be independent consultants? And we had to choose between one or another. And I knew my dream was to be home with my kids. And at that time, I didn't have a husband or kids. I was just kind of going on faith here. But I knew that that was my ultimate goal. And so I chose to be a distributor. But I also knew that I couldn't do it without some serious goals. And I remember this, I remember I was sitting at my desk in my room and I remember crunching the numbers and thinking, this is how much money I'm making right now. This is how much I need to make to live. How can I make this happen? And so I looked at the comp plan and I did, I did the math and I thought, okay, I have a little bit of savings. This is what it takes, but I have to hit basically one star every month. That has to be the bare minimum. I cannot miss a month without hitting one star. We had a different title for that in Heritage Makers. And literally an hour after that, I got a phone call from a lady named Sandy. And she says, hi, I met you at the, you know, um, creating keepsake show in North Carolina. And I know we talked about the business, but I wasn't ready yet, but I think I am now. Sandy doesn't know this, but she was pivotal in my business because she gave me that sixth leg that got me to the rank that I needed to be consistently every month. And she brought me Debbie and Debbie's been consistent. You know, the business just goes like that. And so I knew that's what it took. I worked with them for years and haven't missed a month ever since that point. But, you know, with Heritage Makers and with Longevity, we are helpers. We love to help people. We love to serve people. And sometimes that takes a little bit of time. I know with Heritage Makers consultants, one of the biggest challenges is teaching them to charge for their services, charge for their time, because everyone just has such a huge heart and they want to help. And we had a convention and um, there were like a hundred of us leaders and we were asked to turn kind of our mission into a little 12 by 12 canvas. And then we all walked across the stage and we shared our canvas and there were so many things like, I love to help people. I love to serve. I love the fun. I love the energy. I love the trips. And I show up with this and it's backwards. And it says, I love to spend money. That was my sign. Okay. And, you know, I kind of did it to be funny, but I also kind of did it because I'm serious. I love to spend money. I love it. I love to buy things. I love, I mean, Corona hits and I buy a hot tub. I buy a boat. I mean, I'm thinking I got to entertain these kids. I got to spend some money. Well, you can't spend money if you don't earn money. And so this has been one of my driving forces to this business is if I want the things in my life that I want to have, I have to pay money. Now I pay a lot of tax. I donate to my church. I donate to charity. You know, my grandma was always that hundred dollar grandma. We, my sister and I would say she kept a stack of hundred dollar bills in her Bible. You mow her lawn, your friend mows her lawn, your friend comes to visit when you visit, whatever it was, you, you get married, you have a baby, you have a funeral, whatever it is, you got a hundred dollar bill from my grandma. And so that was just something that I always kind of thought about and wanted to do. So think about how much money do you need to make and, and start with that. You know, I read a book called Profit First and it's an interesting concept, but it, it's talking about when you're starting your business, you think about your profit. Well, I, I've kind of always done that. I've thought about this is how much I want to bring home. So that kind of guides your business activities and it guides your expenses as well, right? 
sometimes we want to invest everything that we make into our business, but you know what, then it's not profitable and then it's hard to be accountable. So the next one, continue learning and improving skills. This is the second tip to turning your hobby into a business. As Deb said, amazingly, as, as Deb does, be a product of the product, okay? That's the easiest way to learn is to try it, plain and simple. Find a mentor. Your mentor should be better than you, okay? Which is like a million people in my organization are better than me. Your mentor is better than you. They might not even know they're your mentor. You know, Denise, Tom, they probably don't even know that they're my mentors, but they are top on my mentor list. You know, Sharon, Keith, I mean, I have a, a huge list of people who've been mentors to me in a variety of ways. So find someone who is better than you at the skills that you're trying to develop and make them your mentors. Um, watch trainings, watch company trainings and participate in team trainings. One, you know, relationships are built as you connect with your team. And so it's important to participate in team trainings. And I always say, participate with the closest leader that you have, you know, that's your upline. Make that kind of priority because that's a relationship that you want. And, but you have to prioritize. So if you've said, I have 10 business hours a week to commit to this business, and you're spending eight of those listening to trainings, then your business isn't profitable because you're not spending your business hours doing income producing activities. So you have to prioritize and it's hard to prioritize because there are some amazing calls out there, but you have to prioritize. I make priority the company call, the um, call to action call. I love these Friday, the, anything skill-based, I make a priority to listen to. And I generally don't listen to live because I'm a mom of four kids and I have to work around that, right? but make a priority to listen to the calls. I learned by listening to podcasts. I used to read books, but I found that I'm much more productive around my house if I multitask and I can get the whole project done if I'm listening to a book while I do it. So I more, I listen to audiobooks and things like that now. So it's important to learn from that. I just listened to a great audio on Facebook ads, on tips for doing Facebook ads. And, you know, things like that always help businesses grow. GoPro, I follow the trainings that Eric Worre has. I know a lot of people in Longevity do. Thanks to Tom and Denise, they got me going on that. And that's the system that I follow and that I lead my team with is the GoPro, uh, the GoPro skills. Continuing to improve your skills, you know, you need to fight through your fears and talk back to the voice in your head that says it can't be done. I have a mirror here. And I am not lying, you can laugh or not, but I mean, I've had to do some hard things in my career as we were negotiating with coming with longevity and all of that and just in business. And, and um, I literally would look in my mirror and I would say, I am smart, I am capable, I can do this. And we have to do that because there's a lot of voices that come in our head that say it can't be done. You know, if you're doing, if you're holding your first event or, I mean, my husband will tell you, I don't like the phone. If there's one thing he nags me about, it's like, have you called the insurance company? Have you called this? Have you called this? I'm like, no, I haven't. Can I text him? So I don't like the phone. So that's a hard thing for me to do. So when I had to do conference calls and things like that, that was a big fear that I had to fight through, but I did it because it had to be done. If you're having an event, I've always said the hardest thing to having an event is putting it on the calendar. That's actually my tip for fighting through things that I'm afraid of. I put it on the calendar and I announce it and then I have to do it, right? I have to do it. I mean to improve, you know, this is your business. Don't be reckless, but don't wait for anyone. You know, learn the news, learn the skills, jump in, and, and you see trainings all over. Tom and Denise are showing us the, how important it is to learn how to tell your own story in a short and impactful way. And that is the most important skill to learn hands down because that's what connects to the heart and that's what people get. And they wanna hear your story. They don't wanna hear someone else's story. They wanna hear your testimonial, your story. You know, along with skills is learning to work within your strengths and weaknesses. Alex Tice did that training on the four types of network marketers, planner, promoter, sorry, planner, analytic, promoter, nurturer, teacher, trainer. I am definitely a planner analytic first and a teacher trainer second. I don't know. I kind of go back and forth, <laughs> but I know 
I had a promoter on my team uh, that was in a, a cup, two levels below me. And I knew she was an amazing promoter. Amazing. She's actually my cousin. I'm related to her. And I said, you keep promoting. I know you're not going to train them. I know you're probably not going to talk to them after you bring them in. I'll help you with that because I'm a trainer and I, I like that. I, but you keep promoting. Don't worry about that. You know, try to do what you can do. Because, but, but I didn't want to stress her out and making her feel insecure about her weaknesses. But to be successful as a leader, find those people in your organization who do a better job at certain things than you do. I'm not a promoter at all. I'm not a nurturer. I have a lot of love. I'm not patient <laughs> and I'm not a nurturer. My organization is filled with nurturers, absolutely filled with nurturers. And so it's part of what makes us successful. Next is treat your business as a business. Okay, I saw this little meme a little while ago and I hate to say it, I just cannot ever forget about it. This was way back, you know, all these click, like, and share, type in and share things, those things that get spread. More money will come your way this week if you type amen and share. No, if you worked last week, right? Simple as that. More money comes as we work. And so we really do have to treat our business as a business, focus on income producing activities rather than, um, you know, just time fillers that are easy scrolling through Facebook. I actually have a policy. So I work from my cell phone, my laptop, and I did a lot of cell phone laptop work during COVID when my kids were out of school. Thankfully, they are in school <laughs> again. It literally took me two weeks to get my Zen back after that. And I, you know, for all you moms out there, bless you, especially those who still have your kids out because it's really hard. But I have this policy where when I'm in my office at my, I'm right now, I'm, I'm in my office at my desktop computer. I 100% focus on business building activities. I don't scroll Facebook. I don't do anything that kind of eats time. And so when I've scheduled in my office, my door's closed, it's 100% business building activities. And so we have to do it. Um, and we have to be productive. You know, I, and if there's a hole, fill it. When we first came over, my team didn't know about makeup. My team didn't know about keto. I didn't know about either of those. So I started the Mineral Makeup Facebook group and learned from others and we learned together. I started the Keto 90 Lifestyle Facebook group. We all learn together. So when there's things that weren't there, I'm kind of the kind of person that fills the hole and then passes it on to people who do it way better than me. Thankfully, we have so many things in place now. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. We don't need to feel, fill holes because those are done. And, you know, we have to be accountable. I, my office hours, when I'm in my office with my door closed, if I'm gone at an event, if I'm at a, if I'm at a training call, I'm accountable to my husband, to my kids, to my family, to people that I serve. I'm accountable for my time and I need to make the most of it, right? It's, it's, it's part of an unwritten agreement that we have. If you guys are running the show during this, I'm asking you to do this, then I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I'm going to bring results. So look for ways to reach out to as many people as you can in the shortest amount of time. I grew the first stages of my business through expos and fairs and things like that, because I wanted to see a lot of people and I wanted to go home and I wanted to pick up my phone and my computer and my email and contact them. And I wanted to juggle business that way. So I would get a whole bunch of names, get their contact information and set up appointments. And then I would come home and Hallie Red taught me to make the appointment when you're at the event. So I'd come home with a full calendar and then I would begin the call. Now COVID has changed this and we've had to adjust some things and just business has changed to adjust some things to be more of an online business. But I always believe that it's better to participate in activities that you could reach out to a bunch of people in a short period of time, in addition to the little one-on-one -on -one conversations that we always have. So things like, you know, Facebook ads, um, like I said, expos, fairs, um, you know, I think Facebook and Instagram are probably two, you know, in the industry, they're two of the most popular ways to kind of accomplish that through Facebook groups and all of that, but lots of reach out and I'm not talking spam. Okay. Don't spam. We, we keep things at that high level, obviously in longevity. and then focus on income and profit. 
but know how to use the compensation plan. You have to qualify for quick start every single month at minimum. And then you have to know based on the depth of your organization, what you need to hit every month to get every penny that is out there on the table for you. Next tip, participate in every single company incentive. I never have missed one. I don't know. I mean, maybe, but I don't remember it because for like years, I have not missed one. You get free shipping. You get prizes. My house is filled with little prizes that I've gotten from that. And you learn the basic steps that are most important to build a successful business. And with everything you do, with everything I do, and I forgot to mention this in a couple of slides, everything I do when I meet people, I always throw out the business opportunity there. You never know. You never, ever know if they're going to say yes or no. And I do it in a subtle way, in a casual way, not pressure. I don't try to pressure, but you always mention that. Third, know your tax deductions, okay? You got you to gotta use them. That is income that you're making. My house is partially deducted. My utilities are, are deducted partially. Um, meals, most meals are a deduction. I had a house full of kids. And, and anyway, there's, there's so many things that you can use for deductions. All right. Can I really quit my day job and do this? You know, I did, but it was strategic. And so when people ask me that, I say yes, but carefully. And you always do part-time first, okay? If that option is available, part-time or casual. And if you do that, you're going to have extra time. What are you planning to do with that extra time that you're going to have? And if you don't know what the answer to that is, then the answer to can I quit my day job is going to be no, right? So you have to have a plan. You have to have a baseline of income. You have to have your skills in place. And you have to do that carefully. Otherwise, it becomes stressful for you and your whole family, and that feeling of desperation takes over the passion that you have for the business, and it, it takes over the message that you share, because now you're desperate, right? And you might be desperate, but you don't want to be so desperate that you that everyone knows that you're desperate, right? So I did it, you can do it, but you have to be careful in that, and you have to be um, at least a one star. The fourth step, follow a system, okay? Ad tag message, best system out there. I, I love the ad tag message because it's the group. We're all supporting each other. We use that with our team. I know that um, Paul and Cheryl use that, Denise and Tom. Like there's, there's different groups that you can use that system in. And so that's super easy. Just plug into it. It's done. Just add your people to the group, tag them on a message, send them the message that says you, you know, you've done that. Obviously, you get permission before you add them. Send them the message saying you've done that. And um, that's how you grow. Love the certified health coach program. Thank you, Paul and Cheryl for that. I have a group of photo group, photo people. And the ones that are having the most success right now in my business are the ones who plugged into the certified health coach program, because it's taught a system that's easy to follow. The training's been amazing. And so huge thank you to Paul and Cheryl on that, because that's something that we've, you know, obviously needed and missed. Three way chats, you know, Use third party tools whenever you can, you know, don't be the expert, use third party tools whenever you can, because that's, you just need to, don't, um, <laughs> don't take the pressure on yourself of having to know absolutely everything and use your upline leaders. We want to, we want to be helpful. We, we want to be used. We want to be that person for you. And then lastly, stick with it. I would never have been to buy a hot tub, a boat, electric bikes, you know, these things that I've, I've been able to buy, I would never have been able to purchase these things if I hadn't had my longevity business. And I have stuck with it for, for, the, from the, for the duration. I have never joined another company during my time with Heritage Makers. I've never, I've never done anything besides Heritage Makers and longevity. And that is one of the biggest reasons I'm as successful as I am in longevity right now. You know, when we were first starting Heritage Makers, Sharon Murdoch, the founder of Heritage Makers, and I would travel around and we would kind of teach people about this and, and try to build businesses in different areas. And at the end of the day, one of our highlights was sitting down at a restaurant and ordering a nice dinner on the company dime and then choosing to buy a dessert. 
Now it went the same way every time. I, I, I struggle with my weight. She probably does, but she walks hundred miles a day. And so she just has never done that, had that struggle. I used to joke that even I was single and my age and she's, she's, um, you know, like my parents' age, but guys my age were checking her out as we were walking through the airports. I mean, she's an amazing, classy, beautiful lady, did so much. And at the end of the day, she'd say, okay, what's for dessert? Look, you, you know, you want this dessert. And I'd say, oh, I don't know. She goes, no, let, let, let's just get it. And we'll just have a couple bites. So we'd order dessert and she'd have a first taste of the dessert. And she'd say, oh, this is the best dessert I've ever had. And it was constant. And I verified with candy too, but I'm like, she, does she do that just to me? Or she goes, no, she does that dessert. It's the best dessert she's ever had. And so I started thinking it might not be the best dessert she's ever had, but you know, she knows how to, she's enjoying it. Right. So why is she telling me that it's the best dessert she's ever had? Is it because she wants me to eat the rest of the dessert? So she doesn't have to probably, right. Probably. But, um, but she also just knows something good. And I'm very selective. I'm going to eat dessert. It's going to be really good. So young Jeb, I love dessert. Young Jebity is the best dessert we could ever have. Okay. There isn't a better, there isn't a better company for us. And so when you make the commitment to stick with it, you're in the right place. I wouldn't say that about every company to stick with it, but with longevity, we're in the right place. So thank you, Denise, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, all of you. Thank you to my team who are here. You're amazing. And I'd be so lost without all of you. So thank you. Lisa, thank you. Oh my gosh, you should have seen. I, it's hard when you're speaking to, to also be reading the chat. I can't do it. <laughs> um, but just let me tell you, go back up and, and read the chat, Lisa, because everybody was like, oh, these, you know, so many great tips. So thank you so much. And it's true. It's, you know, in order to be able to make money in longevity, it can't be a hobby. You have to take it serious and putting into action some of those simple steps. Um, you know, as a mother of four, you are, you absolutely walk your talk and you've had to figure out how to build your business. Look, I hate it when, when people, when women feel like we have to choose, you know, oh, you, you get to either raise your family or you get to have ambition. No, you can have it you can have it all. You can have the whole piece of cake, right? So <clears throat> Lisa, thank you. And I saw Sharon Murdoch on here. Just so you know, one of my favorite people in the world is Sharon Murdoch, who she and Candy May, her daughter started Heritage Makers um, years ago. And uh, she's just, she's an incredible woman. And I always joke with her that, you know, she's who I, I pray and wish I'm going to be when I grow up is Sharon Murdoch. So Lisa, thank you.